Well, Congresswoman Napolitano, Madam Chairwoman, distinguished members of Congress, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, your time and everyone welcome to those, here, those of you here in the room and those joining us virtually to what uh, we are calling a long, long overdue uh, recognition for a, a very special leader. Uh, for those of you joining us virtually, my name is uh, Lieutenant General Scott Spellman. I'm the commander for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And I am proud, come on in, sir. I'm proud to be here today in the halls of Congress to present this year's Gold de Fleury Medal to a woman who has dedicated her life to improving the lives of all Americans. And that is, of course, is Cong Congresswoman Grace Napolitano. The de Fleury Medal has a long and proud history in the U.S. Army and certainly in the Engineer Regiment. And instead of me reciting all of that history here for you this morning, what we've decided to do, we have a short six minute video that talks to the significance and the history of this award. So Karen, if you could play the video, please. I am Lieutenant General Scott Spellman, 55th Chief of Engineers and Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I'm coming to you today from Stony Point, New York, on the banks of the Hudson River. It was at this location in July of 1779 that one of the heroes of our regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Francois de Fleury, exhibited exceptional leadership under fire and was later recognized by the Continental Congress, who even had a medal struck in his honor. The de Fleury Medal was named in honor of Francois Louis Tessedre de Fleury, a French military engineer serving in the Continental Army. In 1777, de Fleury volunteered to serve with the American Army in our fight for independence from Britain. The Continental Congress appointed de Fleury a captain of engineers, and quickly proving himself in and Brandywine, he was promoted to lieutenant colonel. On June 1, 1779, the British captured Stony Point, New York on the western side of the Hudson River and Verplanks Point directly across the river to the east. Possession of the two strategic forts brought a key part of the river under enemy control and also threatened the Americans' position at West Point, located less than 15 miles upriver. After reinforcing Stony Point, the British commander regarded it as a little Gibraltar. Recognizing the danger, General Washington planned a daring surprise assault. On the night of July 15th to the 16th, he ordered a recently formed light infantry corps led by Brigadier General Mad Anthony Wayne to attack Stony Point. The corps consisted of four battalions. Colonel Christian Old Denmark Feminger led the 1st Battalion, with de Fleury as second in command. On July 15th, the Corps, except for a small diversionary force, unloaded weapons and turned in their ammunition. Secrecy was so tight, the troops did not know they were going to attempt to recapture Stony Point. For such a risky assault, Surprise was vital, and the attack was to take place in total darkness. Fixed bayonets and hand-to-hand -hand combat were the orders of the day. The Continentals launched a two-prong attack on the fortress. De Fleury led the assault up the rocky southern slope. First over the wall, De Fleury was followed by a wave of American bayonets. Rushing to the flagpole, De Fleury cut the British colors from their staff. Just after midnight, the 29-year-old De Fleury single-handedly struck the colors of the British 17th Regiment of Foot. By 2 a.m., General Wayne triumphantly wrote to Washington saying, The fort and garrison are ours. Our officers and men behaved like men who are determined to be free. So it was that on October 1st, 1779, de Fleury stood before the Continental Congress to be praised for his valor at Stony Point. For his intrepid behavior, the Continental Congress ordered that a medal be struck in his honor. On the obverse of the medal is the Latin inscription translated as a memorial and reward for courage and boldness. On the reverse, again in Latin, fortifications, marshes, enemies overcome. 
Beneath the fort is the legend, Stony Point, carried by storm, July 15, 1779. Today, the hallmarks of the Army Engineer Regiment stand on twin pillars, supporting combat operations and building vital infrastructure in the United States. The regiment currently consists of two elements, the 91,000 Army Engineer Soldiers serving in active duty reserve and National Guard troop units, and the 35,000 largely civilian members of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Under the leadership of the Chief of Engineers, the combined engineer team provides engineering expertise to the Army in response to the nation's toughest challenge. In 1989, the Engineer Regiment adopted the De Fleury Medal as a symbol to recognize today's engineer achievements because of the shared values demonstrated by the man for whom it was struck. The Engineer Regiment makes four award levels of the De Fleury Medal, steel, bronze, silver, and gold. Number one, the gold medal. The United States Army Chief of Engineers is the only person authorized to award the gold medal each year to an individual whose contributions to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Army Engineer Regiment exemplify boldness, courage, and commitment to a strong national defense. Starting in 2011, two gold medals are awarded annually, one to an individual outside the regiment and of national prominence, and one to an individual inside the regiment. The credit for today's De Fleury Award program goes to Major General Daniel R. Schroeder, who in 1989 was the commanding general of Fort Leonard Wood and U.S. Army Engineer School Commandant. He wanted an award that would tie together the history of contributions of the Army Regiment, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the birth of our great nation. Today, the U.S. Army Engineer Association is the arbiter of the De Fleury Medal Program. The first gold De Fleury Medal recipient was Honorable John O. Marsh, Jr., the Secretary of the Army in 1989. The most recent recipients are Major General Retired Randall Castro, and Congresswoman Grace Napolitano of California. Because values have special meaning to our engineer soldiers and those who support them, it is only appropriate that our premier engineer award represent a soldier who served valiantly during the birth of our great nation. And we saw those values on full display 242 years ago, right here on Stony Point and Lieutenant Colonel Francois de Fleury. Essay ons, Army strong, building strong. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's why this award is special to the U.S. Army Engineer Regiment. Uh, I will just add to the history that we showed in the video there that Colonel uh, Francois de Fleury returned to France and was given command of a regiment to fight alongside Napoleon and was wounded in a retreat from Waterloo. And uh, following that, he retired to, uh, to civilian life. But um, Madam Chairman, I want you to know that when we presented your name to the award committee, the votes came back unanimous. And I'd just like to tell everyone why. And uh, I'll tell it this way. I've, I've had the opportunity to testify before you and your committee on a number of occasions as we work to develop water, water resource development acts. I know we're working on WERDA 22 at the moment. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work alongside you on projects that are important in, in your district, California's 32nd district, whether it be the Whittier Narrows Dam Safety Project, update of water control manuals, forecast and form reservoir operations, and, and many others. And I, I would just say that uh, what is special about Ms. Napolitano is that she not only cares deeply about projects in her district, as she should, and she forces us to keep our, our pencil sharp, but she also cares greatly about the infrastructure across this nation. And ma'am, that, that is evidenced by the tools and authorities that you fight for, for the Army Corps of Engineers, so that not only can we do our, our work better in LA, but we can do it better across the country for everyone. So with that, we, we thank you. That's a, um, a rare quality that has not gone unnoticed with the now 38,000 men and women of the Army Corps of Engineers, and that's why we want to give you this very special recognition. I will tell everyone, we say our vision in the Army Corps of Engineers is to engineer solutions for our nation's toughest challenges. And Madam Chairwoman, you give us the tools and authority to do that each and every day, and we want to thank you for that. And with that, Madam Chair, I'm going to ask you to come forward, and I'm going to ask Katie to come forward and read the certificate while we present the, uh, while we present the medal. The Army Engineer Association, on behalf of the Engineer Regiment, is proud to award the Gold Order of the DeFlory Medal to Honorable Representative Grace F. Napolitano for inspirational leadership to the United States Army Engineer Regiment. 
Representative Grace F. Napolitano exemplifies the finest attributes of a public servant and leader. She has dedicated the majority of her professional career to public service, ranging from local to the national level. While in the U.S. House of Representatives, Representative Napolitano has been a, a bold advocate for soldiers, civilians, families, and veterans. During her 24-year tenure in Congress, she has been a vigorous supporter of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the USACE mission with water infrastructure as one of her top priorities. She has been instrumental in supporting USACE initiatives throughout not only her district, but also throughout the entire nation. Her dedication, her dedicated leadership in Congress substantially contributed to the engineer mission within the Army and brought great credit upon her, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, the United States Army Engineer Regiment, and the nation. Signed, Scott A. Spellman, Lieutenant General, United States Army Chief of Engineers. I'm sorry, but I've got some things here that I'm trying to position. <clears throat> thank you all for coming very much. Hi, Marcy. Thank you, dear. Uh, General Spillman, my friend, where are you? Here, oh, you sat down. <laughs> Army Corps personnel, my colleagues, friends, family, both here and on Zoom. I am incredibly honored and humbled to receive this award. Water has been my passion. I think you know that. Since my early days serving on city council and on the board of the Los Angeles County Sanitation District, our lives, economic success, our recreational opportunities, and the environment all rely on clean, affordable, safe water usage and water operations. That is why I have continued to champion water issues to, in the state legislature and in Congress as the past chair of the Natural Resources Water Subcommittee, and now as the chair of Transportation Infrastructure Water Subcommittee. I am very grateful that along the way I have learned and benefited from so many, so many people that have been helpful. The person who has given me the greatest understanding and appreciation for the incredible work of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is Major General Mark Toy, who I know is joining us virtually from South Korea I met him as a colonel over a decade ago, although because of his youthful look and energy, <laughs> I thought he was a still a cadet from West Point. <laughs> General Toy has been a trusted advisor and friend not only on core issues, but on the broader military issues. He never misses one of, of my academy days as a guest speaker to support our future military leaders. I have been very fortunate that the military and civilian leaders that I have worked with have all been equal to General Toil in their assistance, understanding, compassion on the local and national water issues, including dam safety, water supply in drought areas, harbor maintenance, very key, and addressing veterans' homelessness on core lands. Many of these leaders are on Zoom today, and they include Colonel Magnus, Major General Colleton, Colonel Bolton, Colonel Grant, my esteemed friend David Van Dorp, Cherry Peterson, Karen Beresford, and so many more. Thank you all for your kindness and support over the years. In my time on the subcommittee, the leadership of the Corps has been phenomenal. And I tell you personally because I've, I've worked with them so many, so many times. Thank you, Lieutenant Generals Bostic, Semonite, and Spell, especially Mr. General Semonite. Your partnership and expertise has helped us draft four consecutive WERDAS, four of them, and we hope to go for the fifth, while supporting our soldiers and civilians in our country, not only through normal water resources challenges, but also with increased military and engineering needs and a pandemic. Thank you to Chairman DeFazio 
for his invaluable guidance, his passion, and support of our work on the subcommittee and the Corps. You will be greatly missed in Congress and on the TNI committee. To my incredible subcommittee co-chairs, Congress members Gibbs, Graves, Westerman, and Rouser, your extraordinary friendship and collaboration in creating the policy and the projects that the Corps has implemented to protect, clean, and improve our waterways is why we have been so successful and so grateful for your collegiality, your wisdom, and your leadership. To Chairwoman Captor, my friend, who is both a cherished friend and incredible partner as the Chair of Energy and Water Appropriation Subcommittee, thank you, Marcy, for always listening to the needs of our colleagues and our constituents, for visiting our district, and for your kindness during our tenure together in Congress. To all the members who are here, Chu, Katko, Graves, Majority Whip Clyburn is supposed to be with us. Hopefully he may make him, oh, my other member over here, sorry. My colleagues, all of you, please thank you. Your input in word of process and in our subcommittee is what guides us. Thank you for your support and advocacy and for the improvement of the core operations in your district for the benefit of the nation. To our extremely brilliant current and former staff, their long hours and expertise is what puts this all together. Our subcommittee staff on both sides is second to none, and I told that truly. Thank you for my invaluable water staff director, Ryan, where are you? Thank you, sir, who has been with me from the beginning of the tenure of the subcommittee and has encyclopedic knowledge of WERDA, <laughs> history and policy. Thank you for an incredible team over the years, including Camille Touton, Navis, you're here, thank you, Navis, David Wagner, Alexa Williams, Michael Brain, Michael Bauman, and Logan Ferry. Thank you to my fabulous personal staff in Washington and the district, including my trusted Chief of Staff, Joe Sheehy, Joe, my former Chief of Staff, Denu Chow, who has been with me for a long time, now gone. Uh, thank you to all my Republican staff, Ryan Hamilton, Ryan, thank you, sir, and all, you call, all your colleagues on the staff. We would not be successful without your bipartisan work on our subcommittee and impressive staff. I would like to close to thank by thanking my family, many of whom are watching today, I hope. <laughs> Each and every one of them has provided the encouragement, guidance, and love, particularly love, that has sustained me through the 24 years of federal service. I'm particularly proud to be part of the military family, my husband, who is now deceased, my brother, two of my sons, and now my grandson, who is recently deployed to Europe, have all served our country in uniform. That is why receiving this award from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is one of the highest honors I know. I know personally of the sacrifice and the men in, un in uniform and the Army Corps personnel and their families make to protect and improve our nation. General Spellman, I am grateful to you for being so kind to me and listening to my, my tales of woe. And General Semonite and the men and the men, women of the regiment, the women especially, <laughs> for the exemplary work you do for the American people. God bless you all and thank you very much to all here on Zoom. Thank you very much for being here and now let's get back to work on WARDA 2022. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, my friends.